Kick it! Welcome to Hard Headed Podcast. Hard-headed. We're excited that you've joined us as we have a conversation. We found that a good conversation allows us to share what's on our mind, whether current events, what's grinding our gears, or our pet peeves. It also allows us to share our top three, a list of our favorite things on any given subject, most of which are highly opinionated. In closing, we share a good word. Solid friendships are encouraging. Even if we joke and give each other a hard time, our ultimate responsibility is to uplift each other. Our goal is that you'll feel like you're part of the conversation, like you were in the studio with us, and that you feel encouraged after tuning in to our podcast. It's time to join the conversation. All right, welcome to the show. That is a fantastic intro. Every time we hear it, I just love it. Are you still using my voice over and over again when you guys recorded some? But you know you don't. You use don't yourselves? listen. You don't listen to the show. I do, and Come you on, always man. use mine. Man, yeah, I only use yours at the beginning. You need to use others. Well, Just if you listen, the all, if you listen all the way through, we yeah. we use all three of us at the end. Yeah, uh, who cares about the end? And all three you of need us need to be at the beginning. All three of us are always talking anyway. I don't need to be at the beginning. It's time to join the conversation. We just heard you say that again. That sounded identical. Maybe. I'm a, I'm a radio professional. We'll let the listeners decide. Anyway, today we're going to hear a good word from Chet, and we're going to talk about the top three overpaid professions. Hopefully you're in one of these categories, listeners and watchers. And uh, But first we're going to kick it off with a good something. Hopefully it's good. <laughs> A good what's on Matt's mind. A good what's on Matt's mind. Yeah, I don't know if it's good or not. Hit it. I don't I, kick I'm, it. I don't think we should have used you at the beginning. Now you're struggling. Probably. I mean, it, it, it's only been a week since we've done this. Speaking of struggling, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not struggling at all. I'll, I'll tell you. Mind? I'll tell you who is struggling though. A uh, a, a a few Marines in uh, at uh, Camp Pendleton. Yeah. Who. Uh, over the uh, Memorial Day weekend. Uh, oh, I heard about this. The two guys that got beat up by yeah. the mob. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about this. That uh, I did not. Hit, th- fill me in. So yeah. they, uh, I guess these these uh, civilians. Time out. How do you know something that happened in the news and I don't? Bro, first time for everything. <laughs> really? Where'd you see this? Like, where do you? Uh, I get the, I get a uh, email from Parlor still. Yeah. And I saw it on there. Dude. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. You, he, he's, he's in the know. Yeah, I'm slipping. Yeah, I'm slipping. So anyway, um, apparently there were some uh, uh, some folks there that were shooting off fireworks, and uh, these these two Marines uh, took it upon themselves to go tell them uh, to please stop shooting these fireworks. And in it, a very polite way, uh, I'm sure. I'm, I'm sure that that's how it went down. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, but it uh, it led to an altercation, which ended with which is not normal for Marines. <laughs> I, well, I, I would say the altercation is normal. The way it ended is not. Um, and uh, so anyway, these these guys uh, once the crowd starts, you know, uh, coming after them, uh, they then identify themselves as Marines. Like that's going to deter like a like a group of people from like, beating the crap out of you, and. Uh, so that's what happened. This this group started wailing on him. And what do you, since Chet, you haven't seen this story or heard about this story, what do you think those two Marines did? Um, I think there was a third involved too, but he, it, he well, took off. Well, the fact that it's in the news means they probably whined about it. Like if if that would have been so me, before, bef- you, we, they would not be discussed on a podcast. So before, yeah, before that happened, or, or they would, and it would be a, a different a different outcome. But what do you, what do you think happened before they got to talking about it? I what do you think the result of the fight was? I, I can't remember whether it was 14 people or 40 or how many, know. how many did they send to the hospital? They should have, if, if I understand you can get overwhelmed if it's like two on 14, but they should have, they should have injured some people enough to go to the hospital. Uh, negative chat. That did not happen. This is the newer gentler Marine Corps and the photos circling the internets is two Marines balled up in the fetal position. That's the, that's the photo I saw. No <laughs> way. Yeah. So they just got, they just gave up. Yeah. They gave up and we're like th- th- curled up on the ground and like, I, uh, I am like, 
Matt's speechless. Yeah, I'm. Uh, did they, did they did they get knocked unconscious? No, that's the thing. Like I, I, if, they were, if they were like, were, "Hey, y'all, cut that out." They're like, and then they they're the like, whole, hey, "You ah! make us and just drop." <laughs> No, no, no. Wait, we were reeds. Ah. Yeah, and then they fell to the ground in like fetal position and balled up. And I'm like, so I'm looking at this and I'm like, what, what in the world is going on here? Because at, at, at the very least, there's one or two people getting knocked out. Like, yeah, uh, there's yeah. none of my Marines that would have balled up ever. They would have gone down swinging. And I said, at, at the very least, take the knockout. If you've been knocked out and you're on the ground unconscious perfect because there's already a guy there saying hey break it up break it up trying to right. trying to break everybody up you know and and uh <laughs> but no they were just balled up in the fetal position and then so they they did so let's let's break this apart a little further that is totally not marine behavior zero zero but they started with some kind of marine behavior in the fact that i'm going to go approach a group of uh, that I'm, I'm outnumbered and i'm going to i'm going to start something here they they just have not they don't have the ability to finish anymore Right. So, so the training needs to be, if you can't finish, don't start. Well, I mean, and, and I remember back when I got my safety briefs on the weekend, um, especially a holiday weekend, um, where typically a lot of people don't go home, you mm -hmm. know, they don't fly home, they don't travel unless they live close and then they'll go. But, you know, on a, on a Memorial weekend, you get four, you know, 96 hours, four days, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday is typically what you get off. And, uh, so everybody stays around, goes to the beaches and, you yeah. know, does all that kind of stuff. And that's what these guys were doing. And, uh, but before we would go on, on leave, my last unit, of course, my, and hopefully I don't get him in trouble. He's a, he's a general now. Um, you don't have to say his name, but his, he's got a very distinct last name. And, uh, I mean, it's just pretty awesome. Right. Mm -hmm. Rough and rugged last name. And, uh, so he uh, he would say, "All right, you guys are going on this, you know, Liberty Weekend, and and uh, you know, you, you guys have trained hard, you've worked hard, uh, you've earned it. Don't mess it up. So don't go out, don't drink and drive. If you drive, don't drink. Um, uh, if you if you drink, don't drive. If you drive, don't drink. Don't do drugs. Uh, at the time, it was don't turn gay, and." <laughs> <laughs> uh, don't haze America's children. And if you get in a fight, win. Yeah. Because the punishment, and he, he, he was, he was very upfront about it. He goes, if you come back here, you've gotten in a fight and you've lost, the punishment is going to be way worse than if you'd gone out there and you won that fight. Right. Because I'll stick up for you if you go out there and win a fight and it's, it's justified, you know. The whole Marine Corps is built around fighting the size of the fight in the dog. Right. I mean, and, yeah. and, it, and winning the fight and, and not even necessarily winning all the time no. because you'll get uh, if fights on the beach. I mean, that's just, that always happens. I mean, that's mm -hmm. been around since forever, you know, but I've never seen um, an instance where two Marines are balled up on the ground, uh, essentially begging for mercy. I mean, so that, I, I saw that and, and I, I saw the article and then I saw a buddy post about it and he, he basically has the same view of it, like what happened to the Marine Corps and, right. you know, all of this. And, you know, they were probably, they were probably pogues or, you know, whatever, non-infantry guys. And, right. and uh, I fear that they actually were infantry guys, which is even worse. And, uh, and so I, I think it has something to do with this, this softer generation and, and it's, we're not in a, we're not in a combat environment anymore you know it's a it's more of a garrison environment where you know you're not you're not deploying every seven months to go fight yeah and, you know and you didn't just come back from a seventh month deployment where you know death was on what death was an option every day and so you know you 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 let loose a little bit more and, and you trained harder and you were there to fight and, and yeah and, and to win what, what what's going to happen to those guys back at the barracks i don't know i'm pretty sure they've gone ua at this point there's no there, there's no way I would have stuck around. Yeah. I'd been, I'd been gone. That'd be embarrassing. I mean, because that's, that's a huge embarrassment to the Marine Corps. And if, and I haven't seen, I haven't really followed up with it since. So some, some stuff may have changed, but if I was the command, I wouldn't even back those guys up, you know, cause, but because they did come out and they were like talking about it, you know, it's like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> not only were you lame, you're talking about how lame you were to the world. Yeah. And we've I mean, got a, rep, <laughs> we've got a reputation to uphold here. Like this, this is, yeah. So this has been the biggest detriment uh, to the Marine Corps in, uh, in recent memory. I mean, uh, it, it puts it along the lines of uh, what's that, uh, what's that kid's name? 
Bo Bergdahl, you know, basically yeah. going UA and running away like a weenie. The uh, I could just see it now. Our enemies were, you know, over the strategy table figuring out. <laughs> no, no. Uh, hey, you stop putting in those IEDs. <laughs> <laughs> they're sitting there saying, should we or should we not pick a fight with the U.S.? And they're like, well, we have this that would get us from the Air Force, this that would get us from the Army, this could get us from the Marine Corps, this get us from the Navy. They're like, yeah, let's see what the current status is. And they do a quick search and they see the, the jets of this and the, the and then that news story pops up on the Marines and they're like, yeah, never mind. Marine Marine Corps is not a risk anymore. We're good. We're good. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we don't even need to bring guns to this fight. We can just bring fireworks. Yeah. No. <laughs> I mean, you know, gone are the days of you know that balloon popping when uh, Reagan was giving his speech, you know, and and he stops for a second, he goes, missed me, and yeah. then he just continues on with the speech. And those those days are gone, you know. Oh, uh, we have other days of presidents on stages now. Well, or off for that matter. <laughs> Chelsea and fall. Sandbagging. Yeah. Fall he, again, I guess. He tripped over a sandbag. Yeah. It's funny because he looked back and he <laughs> like points at it. What's sad is <laughs> like uh, you got it. I mean, you, you walked into it. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, I guess. Uh, what, what, wait, you're going to say something. Well, there's sad. just there's an excuse. Like the guy was standing up there for an hour and a half. Like if you if you look at the press corps and some of the stuff that they're talking about, and well, and some of the news media that's covering for him, he was up there for an hour and a half shaking hands of all the graduates. I mean, what do you expect from the leader of the free world? <laughs> Can't no. He's just not good on his feet after he stood for an hour and a half. Yeah, because that's not a good reason. Like that's don't run again. Just he's eighty two. How old is he? I, I, he's in his eighties. I just broke that. He, he, <laughs> what are you uh, doing to my table, bro? I'm lining it up. This thing was like ten thousand dollars. <laughs> the uh, close. Anyway, I'm sorry. There, there. That's what it, that's what Biden would do right now is ball up. So. And, and here's here's what no, makes he it, would just die. <laughs> Go ahead, Matt. Sorry. The uh, the article makes it even worse because when you when you scroll further down, <laughs> it says due to the suspects being juveniles, no further information will be released regarding them at this time. So they were under eighteen. Oh, when can you sign up for the Marines? At seventeen? Well. I, uh, I don't think it's like the armor where you can sign up at 17 and uh, maybe with a parent's permission if you've already graduated, but um, I don't think you can actually sign the paperwork until you're 18. Um, but today, today, I mean, back in the day you could. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure, but it says uh, they, they charged four of them. Um, yeah. And uh, the invention, and then we're all just in this circle being stomped on and being <laughs> said hunter antonio one of the marines i would my name would not be out there i'd be like what's your name spongebob i don't yeah. know like, <laughs> like, <laughs> i don't even know who you're talking to so i had my 11 year old the other day tell me he wants to go into the military nice better go okay. better go marines i told him i said well you know you're gonna have to talk to to mr matt about the marine corps first thing and i asked him like why do you want to why do you want to be in the military he said so I can fight for my country. So, all right. Set up a meeting with Matt. And just so you know, son, fighting for your country is not getting beat up by some firework popper people. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's that's uh, that's not not good at all. Yeah. There's imminent danger around the corner. Yeah. Oh, so embarrassing. Uh, <laughs> but uh, along those lines, so I was talking to my daughter, um, my oldest, because she's a senior this year and, and trying to figure out what she wants to do. And, mm -hmm. and uh, for a while there, college wasn't an option, you know, because she's really into figure skating and wants to do the coaching and all that kind of stuff. And I found out what those coaches make, and I was like. <laughs> Not an overpaid profession? <laughs> Definitely an overpaid profession. Oh, it I, is? He, oh, my goodness. I was like, if you uh, if you had two students an hour, you've got me beat by yeah $40 an hour. Yeah. And uh, I was like, holy cow, that's crazy. I go, that's really good money. And then you think, how many students can you have at a time and all that kind of stuff? And, of course, you work in the evenings, you know, when, when kids can be there. In summer, you work some more. But uh, So because um, she'd thrown around, you know, maybe going to skate for Disney or doing something like that. And then uh, um, 
so I went in and had a talk with her because uh, the reason that she didn't want to go to college was because she did not want to pay to take um, stuff that she's already taken and stuff that she already knows. So like the gen ed type stuff that mm -hmm. I had the same issue with is, which is why I didn't want to go and, and get a degree because I was like, I don't want to pay for that. I just want to pay for stuff that I'm going to learn from. I don't necessarily need the degree. I just want the information. And so um, my wife told me that and there was no prompting because I don't think my daughter's ever heard me say that. Right. And uh, so I just, I, I went in to talk to her and, and uh, I was like, well, what do you, you know, what do you want to do? And she's like, well, you know, I was, I've been thinking maybe, you know, uh, coaching skating and then uh, maybe as an alternative um, being a, uh, being a translator and uh, cause she's good in the languages and stuff like that. And so uh, we started talking and, and I was like, you know, I, I was like, here's the thing. I was like, if you want to go learn the languages, I go, you can go to college to do that. And you can, you know, I go, thankfully there's been, you know, a lot of good organizations, the Marine Corps Scholarship Foundation, and all that, that have, uh, because of my service have offered you yeah. um, scholarships for that. And I said, so we can definitely work that out. I said, but if you're interested, I said, you could probably go to the Air Force or um, one of the other branches and go to DLI, which is the Defense Language Institute. And I go and be in the reserves and I go, they would pay you to learn that language. And then you'd be cut, you know, you'd get a right. security clearance and all that kind of stuff. And I go, that might help you down the road. And I said, and when you, in your off time, you can coach and then you can, you can be a translator around town. Cause there, there's always a need for translators. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I said, that's, that's probably a pretty solid plan, but I don't think she liked the idea of going to the, going to the air force or any of the militaries, but well, I'll tell you what, I think she's considering it. You just ask her to Google how many airmen got beat up on the side of a hill and where they were balled up in the fetal position. Well, I, I mean, don't know if you'd find it. That's probably so common they don't even post it. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not even news. It's only news when Marines get beat up. <laughs> I saw that one coming. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's been a pretty – pretty interesting time to, you know talking about that with the kids especially having a senior and trying to figure out college and what they want to do and and it's it's amazing because you know you, you have those initial talks with them when they start high school and you're kind of coaching them through that and then all of a sudden bam it's here like what do we want to do and tell me about it, it comes up quick yeah so. yeah my youngest uh is pastor driver's test this week and my yep. my so. my youngest just is in this week so yeah yeah scary driver's ed yep all right well thanks for that matt thanks for enlightening us i don't know if i enlightened you but on the marines there i just ran it about <laughs> the, the current, status the current the, state the, the current status of the marine corps all right well we're going to take a quick break and come back with our top three are you driving traffic to your website do you have an engaging homepage? Better yet, does your homepage have a video? We recently created a video for a client about his business and the services they provide. Since he placed the video on the homepage of their website, he has had a number of clients specifically say they decided to use his services because of that video. At Trussell Media, we help businesses create engaging videos to host on their websites, email to clients, and use in their social media marketing. Contact us if you're interested Creating a video for your homepage today. TrussellMedia.com. Fill out the form at TrussellMedia.com slash contact. Let us help you tell your story through video. And we're back. All right. Thanks for that word from our sponsor. Uh, Chet, why don't you get us started off top, here on our top three overpaid professions. Top three overpaid professions. Teachers. I'm just kidding. Ah, no, I'm just kidding. I was wondering where you were going with that. <laughs> I do have an argument about that, but we'll save that for another podcast. Hey, did you know, though, that teachers are some of the most, I don't know how to say this, a lot of millionaires are teachers. 100%. Yeah. Uh, Rain, I listen to Ramsey Solutions a lot. I like their podcasts about financial stuff. Mm -hmm. And there, they did a survey or whatever. And one of their st statistics is teachers are high on the list of million, millionaires. Millionaires. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty crazy. They invest. They 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 have four hundred one k's or that th their union pays into or whatever else. I don't know. That surprised <clears throat> me though, because they're so underpaid. You know? They claim to be underpaid. Claim to be. They complain about it. But it's also one of the jobs that you know what your pay is going to be before you even apply for it. It's true. 
Anyway, uh, that's not that's not it. Yeah, I mean, you <laughs> you went you went to you went to college and you know went and got your got your degree and did all that, and you just decided. Yeah, I know that that salary is going to be low, so I'm going to take it and then get in the job and then complain about it. Yeah, I don't. Uh, that's that's just a different. That's a different podcast. It's not a top three uh, topic, I guess. Overpay. It could be. It, it could be a what's on my mind. I, I put that one on. Well, that's the why back I said burner. it's not a top three. It's probably more of a what's on your mind. <laughs> I'll probably wait until school starts back up. Uh, number number three, mega church pastors. Ah, very overpaid, and it's not just from a base salary perspective, but in a lot of cases. A lot of these pastors write books and their church is on the hook for buying a quantity of them to get that book into the New York Times bestseller list. But what? but they also set it up typically where the pastor is the one that gets the profits from all the book. So it's like another way for them to get paid from the church and to get paid for selling books and uh, be on the New York Times bestseller, which is going to sell more you know, around, around the country. So, and fall from grace and cheat on their wife and all that. Other it's, stuff, yeah. it's not cool. <laughs> not cool. Uh, number two influencers, the amount of money that advertisers or advertisers or companies are throwing towards people that have social media is ridiculous. I, I, don't, I, I don't disagree. It's way ridiculous. And some of these influencers are getting paid money one day and then sinking multi-billion dollar companies the next day because, you know, they shouldn't have been paid to influence for that brand. There's a few instances of that out there. Yeah, You, you, you don't think they're overpaid? Oh, I know they're overpaid. Oh. I want to be one of them, so. Oh, well, good luck with I'm that. I'm not going to complain. Good luck with that. Number one orthodontists they make on average around three hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year i've had orthodontal wow. work on all three of my kids it's never right they always have to go back for adjustments metal parts break off of there other stuff happens <laughs> teeth they are flying out the window their, they stink at their job they do and it's <laughs> i don't get it and they're like oh this is just phase one i don't get yeah, it phase one like, oh, how many phases are there? Uh, well, hopefully just two. Why are we hoping for something? You're making $350,000 a year. You can't tell me? Like, you're way overpaid for this. We're way overpaying for the service you're providing, too, and the quality of it just sucks. Stinks. And you don't know it. Like, and you're in the middle of phase one. And you're like, man, why do they have to go back every week to get this thing fixed? Uh, you know, I don't know. And then you're like, why are we back here? And then I'm like, Hey, let's find somebody else. But we already paid for all the phases because it's cheaper when you pay lump sum. Oh, so now we have to keep coming back to these people over and over and over again. So what you're telling me is don't pay lump sum. Well, you pay more if you go the other route, but I may switch it up a month in cause they suck. Hey, here's the deal. Why don't you just get them to rip all their teeth out and put in some, you know, some of dentures. <laughs> huh? Well, we're about close to that. There I mean, you go. There you go. I mean, Maggie and Noah have had their, they've been put to sleep four or five times and yeah. got teeth ripped out of their face. <laughs> like, I, I'm not a, I'm, they're overpaid, way overpaid. I, I don't. I have a feeling it's a lot like uh, prosthetics. You know, you think that uh, somebody's certified in prosthetics and, you know, they're probably pretty good at their job if they're, you know, they got a business and they're working at a company and, well, well you find out that they're not. Well, that you can good. get certified, but a lot of people are certified. What's that line in, uh, Tommy boy about the guarantee. <laughs> you stick your head up a bull's or, butt. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> well, but that's what I mean. But stick your head up a bull's There's about, something about putting a turd in a box. And well, he never gets guarantee. it right until the very end of the movie. No, but the guarantee thing is not about the butcher. It's about the box with, with, with poop in it and putting a guarantee on the box. That's nothing about poop. You're thinking yeah, of no, Billy there, Madison. There is. I know. Is it? Yeah. But he's talking about sticking no. your head up a he, he goes, says that, but that's not what I'm referencing in Tommy Boy. Just because it's a Tommy Boy, everybody jumps to that. That's not the one. See the uh, right. You're like an orthodontist. See, that's, that's, when, <laughs> that's when he was out on a sales pitch. It's when they were in the factory that he says the the box and slap a label on you it. You know another overpaid profession? The third guy in the podcast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh man anyway i'm I, negative I, on this I'm, deal. I'm, a little, I'm a little bit fired up about the old orthodontist and and how much they get paid three hundred fifty thousand dollars no you're thinking of dan Aykroyd's 
part. No, I'm not. not. Dude. <laughs> I got Matt on my side, and Matt watches all. He He's rarely wrong. I mean, I'm... I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm right. I'm. I mean, I'm pretty sure. Like I'm. I. I could be wrong. So, well, I think it's time for you to share your top three. All right. Well, my number three is right along with your number three. I think American pastors. They're just just, all, just in general. Yeah. <sighs> yeah, I would say a lot of them. Uh, and, and not just megachurch. There are some that don't have megachurches that are overpaid. There are also some that are bivocational that still are a full-time pastor and they have to work just to feed their family. True. So. And that's that's that was the situation my dad was in and uh, until he got on Social Security. Yeah. And those are usually the good ones. Tip, yeah, typically. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, number two, government employees. Which ones? There's a lot of overpaid ones. I would say the higher up ones, uh, the ones leading our Congress, those guys, you know. And then number one. I, I, I'd go further than that on. On em, government employees? Yeah. One, one of the things that I, is, is I see it, not all of them are that way, but the, a lot of times they just don't fire bad ones. So they just stay there drawing salary and they hire somebody else to do the work that was supposed to be done by that other person. So the guy that's not doing, or girl that's not doing their job and still pulling in the salary because they're protected, they're overpaid. Fauci was overpaid. He was the highest paid uh, government employee in all the land. Yeah. He did a great job, though. <laughs> that's the scene. That's the guarantee on the box. Yeah. Gar- I, I, yeah, I remember It's not the butcher. It's not the butcher and the bull. All right. Uh, number one, anyone famous in entertainment influencer uh actors oh you can't put influencers and actors in the same category why not they're famous and they're, they're in, not famous they're in entertainment they're not famous a lot of them are yeah there's are. influencers that are walking into restaurants and critiquing food and doing all oh, being mean to the servers and they're walking up and like what are you doing and they're like well i'm a influencer <laughs> on instagram and they're like get out of my restaurant i don't know who you are well those idiots probably aren't lumped into this they're lumped in because they're because they're not overpaid because they're probably half of those people nah, probably aren't getting paid. I don't. I don't. I, any, anyone famous in entertainment? Any, any influencer that you're naming that now you're putting them in the same category as Tommy Lee Jones, like you're giving them credibility by saying they're the no, same I'm as not. actors. No, I'm not. Kinda or all right. No, I'll, I'm, I'll, I digress. Unless you're number one entertainers. Yep. Matt, what do you got? Number three. People, so along those same lines. But <laughs> <laughs> watch out, chat's on a rampage. People. P- people who watch and I've comment. Had a day. <laughs> I can Shut tell. up, I'm talking here. <laughs> people hey, who watch and comment you ball up on in the fetal position other, on the floor. I'm not, that, I'm not that Marine. <laughs> I am not that Marine as proven by the lack of legs. Uh, People who watch and comment on things other people's do other people do on YouTube. Oh, the reaction people. Yeah. Reaction people. Because those people get Yeah. You'll see these stupid ads pop up like they start doing their videos and then all of a sudden the next time they're, you know, they've got uh, a Subway's cup and a sandwich, you know, and, and they're hashtagging Subway and and I mean they're getting paid because there's millions of views on these stupid things. Yeah. But they're and they're getting paid for it all and they don't have to leave the house. Yeah. Other than to make, they probably even Ubered that Subway sandwich in and paid $900. I'm telling you, that's where all the like waiters and all that, all those people that didn't come back from COVID, they found a way to make money online and they're doing it. Yeah. And that's why the restaurants are suffering. That's why people can't hire good people because all these lazy people found a way to sit in front of their phone and do stupid crap like that and make money. But you're trying so to get the in the whole it. You're society. Well, yeah, man, jump on the bandwagon, baby. <laughs> Stupid people, idiots. Uh, I will watch a how-to video if you can send me one. No, I started Live Local back in 2019. I'm not getting rich, man. COVID-19, you found something to do. COVID-19! Uh, 
<laughs> Number two. This is going Ooh. off the rails. Rail it. Lobbyists. Ooh, that's a good one. So any, I don't know what they. What's their salary? What do they get paid? So roughly, I looked it up. They're roughly about one hundred and ten thousand dollars a year, and right. that's broad. The bigger ones are going to get way more than that. Yeah. yeah. So what, I, I mean, but I mean, what's a what's a day in the life of a lobbyist? Meetings and conference calls. Yeah, that's it, right? But but to influence people, and they have to go into uh, government meetings and speak not not that. even not even government it, meetings and speak no, but no, they'll no. they'll show up like uh so in my situation i i know i know a couple and they with the let's take wind farms for example so they'll go up to you know kansas city or you know kansas government and they'll they'll set up a lunch meeting with uh with the congress you know or, or senate or whatever legislature or senate and and uh you know try to preach to them the uh, the offerings of whatever they're trying to get through um in in our case it was wind farms and you know yeah it's it's so hard because they're funded by special interests and you know you as a just a normal citizen can't you can't get those same meetings with the same amount of time and and get the same amount of attention from those person because that that person's like well um you know i'm with whatever whatever and we'll uh we'll donate to your campaign you know but we really need to get this through and blah 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 Mm -hmm. you know and it's a, it's affecting politics to where it's not it's it's not a politics of the people it's not a government of the people it's a government of corporations which is uh, not what we should be and that, I think that's currently what we are is we're we're a corporate government and All then right. uh, number one Congress Congress gets paid on average one hundred and seventy or or is paid one hundred seventy four thousand dollars a year they only have to serve one term and then they get a retirement off of that which is absolutely ridiculous. You got to do 20 years in the military. You should just be four and done. There should be no frills um, about going and, and serving that because you're serving the people. It's a, it's a supposed to be a, a, it shouldn't be a cash cow. Yeah. It's a service that you're, that you're providing for your country and for your fellow people. You shouldn't be uh, made a millionaire off of it. How do I, how do I get into Congress? Well, you start making influencing videos online <laughs> until everybody recognizes who you are. That's pretty much where it's at these days. Oh yeah, man. You gotta have you gotta have a face for TV. You gotta be good looking. You gotta be check uh, check. You gotta be well spoken check and gay. <laughs> what? Ah, dang it! It's come up a lot here check. lately. But yeah, well, I think that was a pretty good top three. Even the chat yeah, railed so, on mine. So, <laughs> which one all of them so speaking of uh, no, government employees i agree with you now but well, i mean there's like water meter readers that are making probably like thirty thousand dollars a year so it wouldn't be all government employees yeah i mean i'm okay with them i mean they get attacked by dogs all the time or snakes or snakes snakes in louisiana you, you you just almost guaranteed you pull up open that water meter box under the ground yeah a little copperhead in there waiting on you yep i just I, I couldn't do that job i'd be shooting pow what's that honey <laughs> oh chet's reading the water meter again water meter guys here <laughs> yep all right well chet you got a good word for us you want to wrap this up trees there are there's a prominent two trees in the garden. Do you know what they what they were? Two trees in the garden? Prominent two trees in the Garden of Eden. Tree of life and the tree of good and evil. evil. Tree of the knowledge. The knowledge of good and evil. Of good and evil. All right. And there, there were more than two trees. There were just two prominent trees. Correct, yeah. Trees everywhere. Um, okay. So then we're getting into... I didn't see where you're going with that, but okay. Yeah. I thought you were going to say fern. No. <laughs> or uh, I was like, it just says uh, eight of the fruit of the tree. And was it, I mean, was it an apple? No, it wasn't. I mean, or was it a papaya? Mm, not that I know of. I mean, what was it? I don't know. Does it matter other than what, what did that tree represent? What happened? Who ate of it? Eve and then Adam. Eve and then Adam. And then what did they know immediately? That they were naked and afraid. They were naked and they hid from God, right? And then we, we kind of know the whole story. But you want to get into 
the question of like, why did the eating of the fruit create that situation? And we could assume because it was called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil by eating from it, Adam and Eve got knowledge of good and evil. You, you can't assume that? Well, you can assume that, but I don't think that's what happened. What happened? They knew immediately once they ate of it that they disobeyed a commandment from the Lord. Where do you get that from? Because he said, don't eat from that one. Yeah, he said that, but what did they get from it? So uh, let's flip the coin. He kicked them out of the garden and put an angel in front of the gate. Why? Because he couldn't let them eat from the tree of life. Right. So if the tree of life's fruit gave you life and then they had sinned because they ate from the knowledge of good and evil, what did the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil give you? Knowledge, knowledge of, of good, good and evil. evil. Yeah. Right. So the question then is, is did you want, did God want to have humans to have knowledge of good and evil? That's a great question. What do you think? I don't pretend to know the the mind of God. This is this is this gets big. It gets really deep, really quick. And I, I'm going to sum this up here really shortly. We could go a long time. I actually taught a lesson on this that was almost an hour. Well, uh, but bet, he did. I bet you did. He he did he did want us he did want mankind to know the difference the knowledge of good and evil. And the uh, the interesting thing here, and there's a long quote that I'm going to skip, but there's a really short quote by. Uh, uh, John Collins that says God intended that through this tree humans would come to know good and evil either from above as a master of temptation or from below as slaves to sin. So by knowing that you shouldn't do this and not doing it, you would over time come to know what good and evil was through refusing through not giving in a temptation. Or you would immediately know what good and evil was by sinning, by eating the fruit, and then then you have that knowledge, but you also have broken your relationship with God through that. And so, um, and there's all kinds of scripture that back this up that God intends for us to have wisdom. We int- he intends for us to know things. Um, you know, there's Genesis three twenty two. God has wisdom. Angels have knowledge. Young children do not have knowledge, as mentioned in Deuteronomy one thirty nine. Elderly can lose knowledge in Second Samuel nineteen, and God grants knowledge. First King five three. If we look at knowledge and wisdom of King Solomon, we also. What are you doing? Sorry, Sorry. dude. I don't, I'm. But yeah, face me. I'm over, <laughs> overpaid. <laughs> Woohoo. Um. That, that, so he, he granted knowledge and wisdom to King Solomon, right? So it's not that he never intended for us to have knowledge and wisdom. It's that he intended for us to get knowledge and wisdom through our dependence on him. And by Eve and Adam taking and eating from that tree, it was basically a declaration of independence from God. Like, I'm declaring my independence from you. I'm not going to get things through you. I'm going to get things on my own. So, and then we look at, the, the, from a tree perspective, do, do any of the trees come back up later in Scripture? Tree of life, tree of knowledge of good and evil? I think the tree of life does. tree of life yeah. does. And that's going to be um, in the new world. Like it's, it's, it's going to be, and we are going to eat from it, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to give a harvest once a month, 12 times a year, and we're all going to partake of it, which is pretty cool. And that's part of the eternity side of things, living forever. So anyway, trees, good word. Just what if you miss a meal? I don't think we will. Just if it happened. Well, let's ask when we get there. <laughs> or better yet, I mean, why don't you try? You want to you want to get you want to get how it goes. You know. Well, the first meal he ate was fish. Who? Jesus after he was resurrected. After, after he came back. Oh, after he was re- you got to be a little bit more specific. I was like, I don't know where it talked about the first solid food that Jesus ate <laughs> as an uh, infant toddler. After he came back. Yeah. Okay. From the dead. Fish. Yeah. It was probably like fried fish with a little cornmeal, some Tony mm. shasheries. Could be. I doubt the Tony's was there, but maybe something similar. Maybe so. Whatever, whatever, definitely some salt. Whatever Peter had there, you know. All right. Round one. Done.
Dude, what are you all I did was read the quote. <laughs> I lost it. The butcher, but it's not the butcher. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what. You can get a good look at a butcher's butt <laughs> by sticking your head up there, but you wouldn't, wouldn't you rather take his word for it? <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Hard Headed Podcast. Don't forget to share this podcast with others to help us get the word out. Also, if you haven't yet, please rate and review the show. This helps our podcast show up in other people's suggested shows that may or may not have listened to us before. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week.